Today I'm going over something that I noticed that I wanted to do a video on that I thought would be very interesting. And that is, I was looking at the 2024 United States Senate map right now, where currently in the Real Clear Politics, uh, elect or not electoral map, but Senate map, Republicans currently are favored to have 50 Senate seats, Democrats are currently favored in 45, and there are five seats considered toss-up races. And I thought it was interesting because I was looking at this map and I was also comparing it with the electoral map between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. And I wanted to go over the states that were toss-ups and leans for both, uh, or for the Democrats or their Democratic incumbents and look at how their Republican challengers are performing in the polls as compared to Donald Trump. And what I found is a very interesting trend, and I'll be getting to that later on in the video, but it was a very, very interesting thing I noticed when I did this. For starters, in the first Senate race I'm going over is the state of Arizona, where right now, as of today, the Democratic candidate, Ruben Gallego, has 49%, to Republican Carrie Lake's 42.3%. This is a 6.7% lead, which would be, in my personal rankings, a lean Democratic state. And I remember doing a video a few weeks ago where the polls at uh, the Cook Political Report polls towards the beginning of August had not happened yet, and the race was still pretty close where Gallego was about, like, 46% or so. Lake was about 42% still, not really changing too much. But I said this race is possible for Lake to win because there was still a lot of undecided vote and that the people have not really made their mind up yet. In this situation, it seems a lot more undecided voters in Arizona have made up their mind in supporting Gallego as opposed to Lake, now at 49%, nearing that very important 50% margin that is very crucial uh, in elections like this. Next, we go to the state of Michigan, where the Democratic, there's no incumbent in this race either, where Democrat Elisa Slotkin is facing off against Republican Mike Rogers. This is a five-point race, where Slotkin is 47.6, Rogers is 42.6, and it's interesting, the Democrat is leading here, and it's a little, it's not too dissimilar from the presidential race. Uh, currently, I believe Harris is up over Trump here by about two percentage points, so Slotkin's running about 3% better than Harris in this state, but it's not too dissimilar to see the Democratic leading here while Harris is leading nationally here. Arizona was not like that. Trump is narrowly leading in Arizona right now. Lake obviously is not. The state of Montana, I had to do a little bit of digging to find this one because this isn't one of the toss-up states at the presidential level, but Republican challenger Tim Sheehy is going up against Democratic incumbent John Tester. Right now, Sheehy has a five-point lead over Tester. This is the one rare, uh, rare instance of the Republican challenger currently leading right now, 49.8 to 44.8. This will be a close race, but I think right now I would feel pretty confident saying Sheehy will defeat Tester and win this race. I think Montana, on a presidential election cycle, in this era of like partisanship, I just don't think there's enough crossover support for Tester in Montana to win this race at this time. Nevada, where Democratic incumbent Jackie Rosen is 49.6%. Republican Sam Brown has 40.2%. I won't lie, this one really shocked me a little bit. And I'm not more so sh uh, shocked that Jackie Rosen is leading this race. I did fully expect her to lead this race. What's shocking me is how little support Brown has. The highest support Brown has gotten from any of these polls was Remington Research back in the beginning of July at 46%. And even still, there are questions about that poll because that's a Republican internal or Republican skewed poll. Since then, the highest amount of support he's gotten is 40%. So I'm sure there's a lot of undecided vote here, but mainly it seems like a lot of undecided Republican vote or independent vote that just don't know maybe who he is or he's not getting a lot of support. But Rosen is getting near that 50% threshold in every single poll, Brown is not breaking 40% in over almost two months now. So this one surprised me a little bit, but especially because on the presidential level, Trump is leading in this state, and I'll be getting to that in a second as well. Next, go to the state of Ohio, where right now Democratic incumbent Sherrod Brown is at 48.3%. Bernie Moreno, the Republican challenger, is at 43.3%. This is a very interesting race because I feel like in every Senate election I've seen now, both in 2018 and 2012, it seems Sherrod Brown is always the first Democratic incumbent to be like counted out and be like, oh, this is a sure Republican pickup. And yet he performs well in the polls and overperforms in the polls more than you would think almost every single time. So it's very interesting to see how this is going. The thing is, Bernie Moreno is actually performing better than a lot of other Republican challenger candidates, but it's still not enough right now where he's still down by five points. And if the election were held today, 
it's more likely than not Brown would probably win. For Moreno to win right now, he essentially has to win every single undecided voter that's not going for Brown at this time. Which, I will say, is certainly possible because the polls are showing in Ohio are so heavily favored for Donald Trump right now that it is possible for Moreno to do this, but Brown definitely has a lead at this time in Ohio. Pennsylvania, where incumbent Bob Casey is 49% of the vote. Republican Dave McCormick is 414 This one does not surprise me one bit. I think everyone that follows elections, like, from all along knew Bob Casey's a pretty popular incumbent, going to be very difficult for any Republican to beat. McCormick, he's not a bad candidate. He's a pretty good candidate for, like, for Republican challenger standards. But, I mean, a few close polls from Emerson and Rasmussen have a 3-4 point race. Quinnipiac is a 5 point race. But I just, I don't know if McCormick has enough to defeat Casey in this very, very important state at the presidential level. And at the Senate level, I think it's just too far for Casey at this point for McCormick to catch up. I will say this, though. If on election night, McCormick can lose to Casey by like four or five percentage points and keep it relatively close, I think there's a good case to be made that maybe in 2026, Dave McCormick wants to take a chance and run for governor of Pennsylvania or something like that, or maybe run for another Senate race against Fetterman in four years. That's something to keep an eye out for, but right now, I just don't see a way McCormick can win this race. Also, Wisconsin, where Democratic incumbent Tammy Baldwin is facing Republican Eric Hovd, and it's 50.6 for Baldwin right now. Hovd's at 43.9. Aside from Sheehy, actually, I believe he's the highest um, polling Republican challenger. Pretty consistently around that 43, 44 percentage point margin. The only problem is Baldwin is polling very well at 50% or more in pretty much every single poll in the last month or so. It's looking very, very clear that Baldwin's going to win this race probably over five percentage points is what it looks like at this time. So lastly, just going over the top battlegrounds of the RCP average, we're looking at this is where Trump stands right now over Harris and a bunch of these states, and I'll be going into more detail about them in one second, but I just want to give you a quick look at where Trump stands right now, and then I'm also going to go into uh, the next exercise of this video, which is the part I really wanted to get to. And if you stay tuned this long in the video, I really appreciate you doing so. So I made a little cross tabs chart here of what Donald Trump's percentage of the vote is in the state and the Republican challenger candidates percentage of vote in the state. Because every state I just showed you for the Senate, they all have Republican challengers. There's no Republican incumbents included in this data survey. So in Arizona, as I showed you, Donald Trump has 47.3% of the vote. Carrie Lake, the Republican, is 42.3%, which means Trump is outperforming Lake by 5% of the vote. Michigan, Donald Trump is 46.5%, Mike Rogers is 3.9%, or Mike Mike Rogers, excuse me, is 42.6%, Trump is outperforming him by 3.9%. One of the better margins we're actually going to see here. I'm not sure if that's good news or bad news uh, for Trump that he's only outperforming Rogers here by 3.9%. I'm sure Trump in Michigan would much rather be at that 47, 48% margin. Montana, definitely not a swing state at the presidential level. Trump is at 56.5%, and Tim Sheehy, the challenger, is 49.8%. This is one of the better news ones for Republicans. Trump outperforming Sheehy by 6.7%. Still notable because he is running up against a Democratic incumbent in this state that maybe that extra 6.7% could provide very, very crucial if that margin cannot be made up. Nevada, this is a very big one, and again, one shocked me very much. Donald Trump is currently polling at 47.4% in the state of Nevada. Republican challenger Sam Brown has 40.2%. Trump is outperforming Brown by 7.2 percentage points in Nevada. And as I showed you, right now, Nevada is very, very close, and it really can go either way at the presidential level. Brown at 40.2%, there's really no way Sam Brown can win that race if he continues to outperf- or underperform Trump by 7.2%. I just I don't see how that's possible, especially when he's only at 402 by far the lowest number we've seen in this data survey. Next, we go to Ohio, a state that I fully expect to vote for Donald Trump by double digits again, by over 10 percentage points over Kamala Harris. Trump has 51.5% of the vote, and right now Republican challenger Bernie Moreno has 43.3%. Trump is outperforming Moreno by 8.2%. It's very, very interesting that, as this has shown so far, all the Republican challengers have not only been underperforming Trump, but underperforming Trump by a lot. Ironically, except for Mike Rogers at 3.9%, that's been the smallest so far. 
The final two is Pennsylvania, where Trump is 47.7, and Dave McCormick is 41.4. Trump is up 6.3% over McCormick. And lastly, Wisconsin, which, surprise, a little tease here, Wisconsin is actually the best net difference between Trump at 47.6 and Eric Hoft at 43.9. The only problem is, uh, as I showed you in the polls, Tammy Baldwin has already reached 50 percentage points in the average. So even though Trump is only outperforming Hobbs here by 3.7, and that means Hobbs is performing better than a lot of other Republican challengers in the other states, there's more uh, solidified excuse me, Democratic support where it may not matter on election day. So when you do all the averages of these polling percentages, Trump is polling of all of these states uh, combined and then divided by the number of states I polled. Trump is averaging about 49.2% of the vote in all of these states that I did. And I will say also that most of them are swing states, but Montana's 56.5 and Ohio's 51.5 might skew the survey a little bit because they're not really considered toss-up states. But still, I wanted to include them for the point of this. And the Republican candidate percentage of the challenger vote is 43.4%, which means Trump is outperforming the Republican candidate for Senate by an average of 5.8 percentage points. And this is where my personal interpretation comes into play is this is where the problem is. Trump is doing right now, in my view, very fine in terms of where he stands for getting elected president of the United States. This is the best Trump has ever polled and compared to 2016 and 2020. This is, I think, the best shot Trump has ever had to win based on his own personal polling numbers since 2016 and 2020. You really can't control how well Harris polls or such of that nature, Trump can only really concern himself and his campaign with how he is doing at this time. And right now, as I showed you, Trump is polling pretty well in most of the swing states. He's at 47% or above, and pretty much all of them except except for Michigan, excuse me. I think he would much rather be at 48 or 49% and feel much better about winning, but in 2016 and in 2020, when Trump outperformed the polls that he had in both instances, if that trend were to continue again, that could put Trump up to 48 or 49% and give him a very decent shot at winning. The only thing is, I can't say the same for a lot of the Republican challengers, where they're only polling on average at 43.4%, and they're all running up against either Democratic incumbents or the first-time candidates, for instance, in Arizona, where Carrie Lake's at 42.3%. I mean, with numbers like that, she might as well be running against an incumbent. Mike Rogers in Michigan at 42.6, that might be one of the better challengers the Republicans have right now. And that's very, very scary because I think Elisa Slotkin's going to win this race. Montana, Tim Sheehy is the only Republican challenger right now poised to actually win one of these races. Nevada, Sam Brown, the way he's been polling, it doesn't look like he'll be able to pull up an upset in the next 70 days. Bernie Moreno in Ohio, I wouldn't exactly rule out yet because there is still enough undecided vote where Trump is outperforming him by 8.2 percentage points, and the polls that if enough people vote down ballot and down ticket for him, that it might be enough to make up that margin for Moreno to win. But I really am kind of skeptical if that will be the case in Arizona or in Michigan, especially or in Nevada. Pennsylvania, I don't think it will be. Wisconsin, I don't think it will be either. So it's very, very interesting that Trump is outperforming the Republican challengers for Senate for fi- by 5.8 percentage points, especially because... I could be wrong here, and please correct me in the comments if I am wrong. I believe every single one of these candidates that's a Republican challenger right now, Donald Trump endorsed in the primary. So Donald Trump signed off on all these candidates. So voters in the state that pay attention to what Donald Trump is doing would know that these candidates are supported by Donald Trump. And yet Trump is still outperforming them by 5.8 percentage points. So now the questions start. Is it a lack of name recognition compared to Donald Trump? That could be a reason they're down so much. Do maybe people just not pay attention of the election until maybe the last few months, like past Labor Day or until the first debate, and they just vote down ballot on election day? That could be. There could be a variety of factors, but I think one simple fact is that if any of the Republican candidates want to win, they have to get that margin down where Donald Trump is at 49.2% of the average and they're 434 5.8% margin. They have to get much closer to that because if there's enough vote splitting, if there's like 2 or 3% vote splitting between Trump and the Republican challenger, 
then at the end of the day, I think of all these races, the only one that might go Republican is Montana with Tim Sheehy. And even though I think Sheehy's favored to win right now, I wouldn't exactly call that a 99% lock. It's still a very close race against a Democratic incumbent. The rest of the races, 8.2, 7.2, 3.9%. Again, Michigan's got the best shot, probably the best shot of these I've shown so far. Arizona, plus 5 for Trump. Pennsylvania, plus 6.3. Wisconsin, plus 3.7, but the solid Democratic support. The Republican challengers need to boost this margin and get more of, uh, maybe more name recognition with Trump support. Or right now, Trump has a decent shot at winning the presidency, but not too many Republican senators in these toss-up states will be coming with him. And that's something I'm sure will drive the Republican Party crazy, is if Trump can win, but only get 50 senators in the United States Senate. Maybe 51. So that'll be something interesting to keep an eye out for. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thought this was an interesting topic and one that I was really thinking about doing for a few days and definitely something that I thought was warranting giving attention to. If you liked the video, please give this video a like and click subscribe. Uh, share with all your friends and family. Make sure you stay notified also that I'll be posting a video every single day from now until election day. So please stay tuned for all those videos I have coming out in the next few days and a few weeks. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you in a future video.